Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Igor. I'm going to, I work in the TensorFlow team, and I'm going to talk to you to, today about distributed TensorFlow. Well, why would you care about distributed TensorFlow? Many of you know the answer probably, but <clears throat> just in case, it's a way for your models to train faster and be more parallel. It's a way for you to get more things done, iterate quicker. Um, when you train deep learning models, it can take a long time. And when I say a long time, I mean weeks. With all the available hardware to you out there, scaling up to hundreds of CPUs or GPUs can really make a difference. How could you scale up? Well, you could just add a GPU to your machine. In this case, this is just plug and play. You insert the GPU, TensorFlow handles all the details for you, and you see a nice bump in the training speed. You could also insert multiple GPUs. In this case, <clears throat> in this case you'd have to write additional code. You need to replicate your model. You need to combine gradients from every GPU. And if you're using batch norm layer, you have that tricky question of what to do with the statistics on the, each GPU. Um, the point I'm trying to make is that you need to do additional wor work to make this work. And you need to learn stuff that you didn't plan on learning. You can also use multiple machines. And this situation is similar to the one before. But in this case, your bottleneck is probably going to be that communication between the machines. You'll, probably, you'll start thinking about minimizing that communication and probably doing more work locally. For example, combining the gradients on the local GPUs before exchanging them with the remote GPUs. Unless specialized networking hardware is used, you, the coordination costs in this setup are probably going to limit your scaling. But there is an approach, there, there is a solution to this. <clears throat> this approach is called parameter server. Um, some hosts, we call them parameter servers, they're going to only hold training weights. Other hosts, workers, they have a, they're going to have a copy of the TensorFlow graph. They're going to get their own input, compute their own gradient, and then just go ahead and update the training weights without any coordination with other workers. So this is an approach with low coordination with a large, between a large number of hosts. And there you go. This scales well, and we've been doing this at Google for a long time. But there is a wrinkle with this approach. You give up synchronicity, and that has benefits. And if you think about it, parameter server approach, it's an approach from the, per, from the CPU era. With all the reliable communication between GPUs, we can, we can consider designs which have tighter coupling and um, more coordination between the workers. One such approach is based on all reduce. That's a, not a new idea. Um, the general goal of all reduce is to combine all the values and distribute results to all the processes. Um, all reduce is kind of tricky to explain on the slide. <laughs> but you can think of its results as reduce operation followed by a broadcast operation. But don't think of it that way in terms of performance. It's a fused algorithm, and it's way more efficient than the, those two operations together. In addition to it, um, hardware vendors um, <clears throat> hardware vendors often supply specialized all reduce implementations that TensorFlow ca can, could secretly use behind the scenes to help you. All alternative approaches, they typically send all data to a central place. All reduce is not going to have such a bottleneck because it um, distributes coordination between GPUs way more evenly. With every tick of all reduce, each GPU sends and receives a part of the final answer. So how could all reduce help us with our models? Well, consider, let's say you have two GPUs. You copied 
layers and the variables on every GPU, and you can you perform the forward pass nice and parallel. But then during the backward pass, as the gradients become available, we can, we can use all reduce to combine those gradients with their counterparts from other GPUs. In addition to that, because of the way, in addition to that, gradients from the outer layers are available before the gradients from the other layers. So we could overlap backward propagation computation and all reduce communication. That gives you even more steps per second. The bottom line is, when, all re when, um, when communication between GPUs is reliable, all reduce can be fast and allow you to scale well. How could you use all reduce in TensorFlow? Well, so far in this talk, I told you that to take advantage of multiple GPUs, you need to write additional code, change your model, and learn stuff. Chances are you're using, you're following our advice of using the highest level API that works for your use case. That probably is estimator. With estimator, your model is specified by the model function, and it has no knowledge about GPUs or devices. So to have that model use multiple GPUs, you just need to add one line. You need to pass an instance of a new class called mirror strategy. And uh, Mirror strategy is a, is a one implementation of our new distribution strategy API. Distribution strategy tells TensorFlow how to replicate your model. Oops, sorry. Another thing I want to say is that mirror strategy takes a number of G could take a number of GPUs or a list of GPUs to use, or you can not give it any arguments at all, and then it will just figure out what GPUs to use. Mirror strategy works in a way exactly as I described before. It replicates your model. It uses all reduce for communication. Um, so gradient updates from every GPUs, from all GPUs, they're going to be combined before, before updating the weights. And each copy of your model on every GPU is part of a single TensorFlow graph. That means this is in-graph replication with synchronous training that use, uses all reduce on many GPUs. Now, the last 10 minutes are kind of a waste of time for you if this doesn't perform well. And it does perform well. Um, as you add GPUs, this implementation scales well. We have a team at TensorFlow that specifically works on fast implementations of all reduce for various machine configurations. And this implementation gets 90% scaling on eight GPUs. And again, it didn't require any change um, to, the mod to the user's model. <clears throat> it didn't require any change because we changed everything in TensorFlow that's not your model. Things like optimizer, batch norm, summaries, everything that writes state now needs to become distribution aware. That means that it has to learn how to combine its state with other GPUs. And this is important because alternative APIs out there, they typically ask you for, to, to rephrase your model, to supply optimizers, for example, separately so that they can do all the um, state coordination behind the scenes. And if you have some experience with training your models on multiple GPUs, you might be wondering, well, can I, can I save my model with, on a computer with eight GPUs and then do, do an evaluation on it on a computer with, say, no GPUs? Um, typically, this causes a problem. But with distribution strategy API, we maintain the backward compatibility on the checkpoint level. So mirror strategy, it has multiple, it has multiple copies of the state on every GPU, and those, that state is in sync. So mirror strategy is going to save only one copy, and then at the restore time, it's only going to rest restore that state to required number of GPUs. So 
this use case is, going, is supported. Distribution strategy um, works with eager mode as well, but we are, we are still fine-tuning the performance. And distribution strategy is a very general API that I hope in the future will support many use cases. Um, it's not tied to estimator, and we are looking into ways of um, creating even more new, better APIs based on distribution strategy. Um, we, in the future, soon, pretty soon, <laughs> we, we intend to support all kinds of, many kinds of um, distributed training. Synchronous, asynchronous, multi-node, model parallelism, all of that is going to be supported based as part of distribution strategy API. But until then, for multi-node solution, please continue using estimator, train and evaluate. Or try Horovod. That's an outstanding community project that also offers a multi-node solution. Um, mirror strategy is available for you in our nightly build, and we are very, very actively working on it. And it's a, it's a, it's a product of work of many people, and um, I would really encourage you to try it out and let us know what you think about it uh, via GitHub or talk to us after my talk. All right, um, thank you. Thanks for your attention. Thank <clears throat> you.